supposed to talk about is the future of evangelical support for Israel. And we have just had an excellent, excellent foundation, scriptural foundation laid for why we should support Israel. Uh, I want to explain why I'm using the term evangelical rather than just speaking about Christian support of Israel in general. I also have to, uh, a personal disclaimer here, I am an evangelical, that is how I have always identified. I am currently um, struggling with the use of that term in terms of my own faith because as Dr. McDermott said, what we really believe is orthodox and what's happening now is in the evangelical world is there's such a shift, there's so, so many different things happening that it's confusing, it's no longer a clear term to use. But I'm still going to use it throughout this talk because I am addressing what is known as the evangelical world. And all of you here today, uh, the Christians, I assume, identify as evangelicals. And so you know what I'm talking about. So I don't have to, I don't have to explain it in this context. And, the, and it is the evangelical world that is under uh, assault right now in terms of their support for Israel. So that's a, just, a, I always like to explain the terms that I'm using. All right, so I'm focusing on evangelical support for Israel because evangelicals represent the part of Christendom that has historically supported Israel's right to exist. And this critical source of support is under assault. This is extremely alarming, not only for the sake of Israel, but because for the vast majority of evangelicals, their support of Israel also includes a love and respect for the Jewish people and the Jewish faith. Therefore, if evangelicals turn against Israel, it's also likely that they will lose their love and respect for Jews and Judaism as well. This bleak scenario is possible because evangelicals, for that matter, Christians in general, do not always understand the significance of the Jewishness of Jesus and the Jewish roots of Christian faith. So as a result, they don't recognize the serious consequences to our faith and to how Christians view Jews when we lose the Jewish Jesus, like Dr. McDermott talked about last night. That's why everything that's been said so far by both of these biblical scholars is, is so vitally important for every Christian to know and understand. I believe that true comprehension of the Jewish roots of Christianity is an essential antidote to Christian anti-Semitism, because it's much harder for Christians to turn against Jews when they recognize the Jewishness of their Savior. As Brad said last night, evangelical scholar Dr. Marvin Wilson of Gordon College has noted that if the Christians of Germany had understood this, the Holocaust would not have happened. It would not have stood by, or in some cases even helped. But I believe that evangelicals will not abandon Israel to enemies intent on her destruction if they understand these roots of their faith and the fact that Jews are quite literally from the physical stock of the family of Jesus. This understanding makes Christian anti-Semitism unacceptable. And as you heard from me last night, it's what I'm all about is combating Christian anti-Semitism. Without this understanding, Christians are quite susceptible to anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism as demonstrated by how the German church turned against the Jews. An awareness of the Jewish roots of Christianity also contributes to Jewish-Christian relations and enhances our ability to work together for a common cause. So I want to say how happy I am that there are Jews and Christians here together at this conference. Thank you again for being here. So I think it goes without saying that in light of current world events, now more than ever, Jews and evangelicals must stand together for our own sakes and for the sake of Israel. Joanne's going to talk tonight about the joy of Jewish-Christian relations. That'll be, that will be a joy to hear. Because we are all inundated by reports of intensifying attacks on our Western values of freedom and democracy and our way of life, both here in the U.S. and abroad. And we are witnessing how anti-Zionism, which as I said last night, is nothing more than a new form of anti-Semitism. Anti-Zionism is on the rise around the globe in alarming, in alarming proportions. In light of these realities, it's important to remember what we, evangelicals and Jews, have in common, and then use that as a foundation to build 
build and strengthen the very necessary relationship between us and Israel. Our two faith communities share values like individual freedom and democracy. We share the belief that every human life is precious and to be respected. In short, we love life. These values, which form the foundation of Western civilization, are rooted in the teachings of the Hebrew Bible, which is authoritative scripture to both communities, both Jews and Christians. However, we have more in common than these shared values. We also share the reality that both of our communities are targets of a growing movement that intends to destroy these values, our way of life, and even our very lives. But these shared values and common dangers, are, they're two good reasons to stand together, but we also have to stand together for the sake of Israel. Because that tiny, free, democratic country in the middle of chaos it's literally on the front lines of the war that's being waged against all of us. I mentioned that in addition to being inundated with reports of attacks on our values and way of life, we're witnessing the alarming rise of anti-Zionism. And we know that this is um, also happening in the mainline churches. It has been for years. But recently, there is a growing movement in the evangelical world. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm focused on in my work. That's what I'm focused on in my life. That's why I've done uh, everything I've done for a number of years. Uh, and this is so critical for us to know and understand because this doesn't just have to do with Israel. Shifting sands in relation to the future of evangelical support for Israel will result in a change with how evangelicals relate to the Jewish people. This is very, very dangerous. A change for the worse in what is a very necessary relationship. We have to stick together. A change for the worse in this relationship will result in the weakening of a significant obstacle to anti-Semitism in the Christian world. Jerry has given us an excellent presentation on the long history of Christian Zionism. And this current evangelical support is just the modern version of that that's built on this 2,000-year-old foundation. But it's precisely because of this historic belief in a Jewish homeland that the evangelical base of support has become the target of what is an increasingly successful Palestinian political campaign. It is political, but it's disguised in theological terms. And I have to admit, this is an aside, I'm talking about Palestinian Christian leaders who promote this narrative. I am not talking about Palestinian people in general. As I, myself, and as Christians, we care about the Palestinians just as much. God loves them equally. And um, Jerry's going to talk about what about the Palestinians this afternoon. So I'm not, I'm not anti-Palestinian people. I am against error, I am against false theology, and again, I am against lies that are being used to promote a political campaign. So this morning, I want to expose the foundations and the methodologies of this growing assault on evangelical support. This is important information for all of you to have so that you're equipped to, one, I want you to be able to refute the theological and the historical errors in the Christian anti-Zionist narrative. I really exhort you to oppose Christian anti-Semitism in all of its forms, wherever you see it, and protect the important relationship between evangelicals and Jews. The crusade to win evangelical support for the Palestinian cause is clothed in a, it is a false theological and historical narrative. It appeals to well-meaning Christians who are moved by an emotional message. The message is full of emotions, they focus on words like justice and peace. Uh, that appeals especially to the younger generation. But this message lacks historical context, it lacks facts, and it lacks a consistent method of biblical interpretation. They take what they want, and they don't take what they don't want from scripture. This, um, the theology that forms the foundation of this narrative is nothing more than a customized version of traditional replacement theology, which heard mentioned lots and lots already. Um, we've already had a lot of discussion of replacement theology, but I want to focus for a minute on the particular version that provides the theological underpinnings for the Palestinian cause. Palestinian replacement theology replaces Jews in the purposes of God through an outrageous claim 
that the Palestinians are the indigenous people of the land. According to this belief, the Jews who now live in Israel are of European descent and only appeared in the land in the 19th century. I mentioned this last night, and I don't have time to go into it, but there's been studies that completely disbunk, just debunk this whole theory. But according to this claim, the Palestinians are the rightful owners of the land, and they're being oppressed by illegal occupiers. So what's the logical conclusion of that? A Jewish state is illegitimate. The assertion that the Palestinians have owned the land for 2,000 years promotes a political cause, but it also has other far-reaching ramifications. The logical conclusion of the claim that Palestinians are indigenous to the land is the belief that Jesus was a Palestinian. After all, how could Jesus have been Jewish if there were no Jews in the land when he was born there? This is, in fact, what many Palestinian Christians believe, and there are serious consequences from this this is a politically inspired theology. The invention of a Palestinian Jesus denies the Jewishness of Jesus and deconstructs the foundations of Christian faith by severing that faith from its Jewish roots and context, from the tree that we've already heard so much about. As a result, the Christian faith is delegitimized. A Palestinian Jesus is also dangerous for Jews. When Jesus is separated from his Jewishness, the way is paved for the same demonization and dehumanization of the Jewish people that resulted from the Nazis' identification of Jesus as an Aryan. And we know from history where that leads. But now I want to get more specific and focus on three significant developments that threaten future evangelical support of Israel, all of which began in 2010. So this is still fairly recent, but it's, it's accelerating at an alarming rate. 2010 was the year that the first in a series of conferences known at Christ at the Checkpoint was held in Bethlehem. You heard a mention of this last night. That's has been three of them. Since 2010, this gathering has been hosted every two years. They started in 2010, and then 2012, 2014, and 2016. It's hosted by Bethlehem Bible College, which self-identifies as an evangelical Bible school. The president of the school is a man by the name of Jack Sarah. And now here, I need, I need to use names of people and institutions so that you know the source from which this is coming. Um, I hope that you can feel my spirit. I'm not doing this in a, in a hateful way towards these people. They, they identify as Christian brethren. Um, but their theology is anti-Israel. And you've heard enough now to know, <laughs> to know that um, this is not, not good, and it's not biblical. So um, I'm sorry if I step on any toes by mentioning names, but I don't feel that there's any other way to let you know who's doing what and what's going on. So through the outreach of Bethlehem Bible College, American evangelicals are targeted with a one-sided message that's based on Palestinian replacement theology, fallacious charges of racism and apartheid, flawed historical narrative, such as the, the claim that there weren't any Jews in the land before about 150 years ago. As I said, Dexter's attended three of these conferences. He mentioned the, the story that he told last night was from the most recent one. He's written extensively about them. So for a more in-depth analysis of all the, of the error and what's done and said there, please see his articles on the camera website. Just go to the camera website on the left. There's a list where you can Click on authors, click on authors, and you'll find his name, you'll find all the articles. The majority of the participants at Christ at the Checkpoint conferences are American evangelical leaders who return to the U.S. and propagate a narrative that is nothing more than Christian anti-Zionism, which is the new manifestation of Christian anti-Semitism. One example, just one, there's, there's a number, but one example is a woman named Lynn Hybels. She's the wife of the pastor of Willow Creek Church. Chicago, this is a mega church. There's tens of thousands of members in, in multiple locations in the Chicago area. They also have a worldwide outreach. They're in like 80 countries. They support ministries and churches in 80 countries. So when she promotes this narrative that um, the Palestinian people have the right to be there, that Israel is all wrong, that Israel is the oppressor, this is getting worldwide exposure. 
She has been a speaker at the Crisis at the Checkpoint conference. She went, went, what introduced her to this was her involvement in a Telos uh, group tour. Telos is an organization that takes people, selects people, Christian leaders, people that are going to be influential. Not just anybody can go on these tours. They pay all their expenses and they expose them to this Palestinian narrative. So they're very one-sided tours that these people get. When Heibel's went on a tour, she's come back as a radical proponent of the Palestinian cause. So what they, what they promote, this message, the Palestinian Christian message, is that Israelis are oppressing them in the same way that first century Jews allegedly persecuted Christ. The implication is, if Jesus lived in Bethlehem today, he would have to go through checkpoints just like the Palestinians do, because remember, according to them, Jesus was a Palestinian. However, in reality, Jesus would not be allowed into the Bethlehem of today, not because of the Israelis, but because of the Palestinian Authority, which has already declared that any territory under their control is Judenrein, Jew-free, no Jews allowed. Who's, who's the apartheid party here? Israel's accused of it, but Israel has all kinds of nationalities living in their land. This reality leads me to an obvious, glaring inconsistency in the Palestinian narrative. On one hand, the claim is made that Jesus was a Palestinian, since according to their political script, there were no Jews in the land 2,000 years ago. But on the other hand, the message from Bethlehem Bible College in Christ at the Checkpoint is that if Jesus lived there today, he would be oppressed by the Israelis in the same way he was persecuted by first century Jews. Well, how could Jesus have been persecuted by Jews if there weren't any Jews in the land who lived there? So which is it? You know, was, <laughs> were there Jews in the land 2,000 years ago or not? But this propaganda doesn't let facts like this stand in the way. They don't, and, and they don't expect the people who are hearing this to think, I guess, to think about, to, to recognize the inconsistency. What's important for the sake of their narrative is the perpetuation of the two millennia old Christian libel that says Jews persecute Christians. All right, the second significant development of 2010 was the production of a, of a virulently anti-Israel Christian documentary titled Little Town of Bethlehem. The documentary was financed by Mark Green, one of the owners of the retail chain Hobby Lobby. It was produced under the direction of Sammy Awad of the Holy Land Trust, which is a pro-Palestinian organization headquartered in Bethlehem that also helped sponsor the Christ at the Checkpoint conferences. In short, this film presents a false narrative that's consistent with that of Christ at the Checkpoint, and it's nothing more than propaganda that demonizes and delegitimizes the Jewish state. It's been shown on over 400 venues in the U.S., including evangelical college campuses and evangelical churches. So as a result, it's made a significant contribution to the promotion of the Palestinian agenda and the undermining of the next generation of evangelical support for Israel. Dexter has written a detailed analysis, again, of the particular problems in this movie, and he hasn't even covered them all. There's so many. It's a very, very long article. Um, so if you're interested in more detail, again, please see his articles on the camera website. The reason I mention this movie now without going into more detail is that it's extremely relevant to the third significant development of 2010, which was the year a new worldwide evangelical organization called Empower 21 held its first international conference in Tulsa. I attended their second international conference this past May, a year ago, in Jerusalem. Every speaker in the main sessions, over the course of four days, this is morning, afternoon, and night, every speaker in some way emphasized the necessity of Christian unity in order to, re to realize the organization's goal of world evangelization. The theme was so consistent, it was obviously orchestrated. There's a twofold problem to this call to unity. On the surface, we all think, okay, Christian unity, that's fine. But there's a, there's a twofold problem to the way that they were doing this. The first is that no definition was given by any of the speakers as to what the leadership of Empower 21 means by this use of unity. So the only thing you can assume, what conference attendees would, would think, they go to the dictionary definition of unity, which is, quote, the state of being in full agreement. In other words, unity requires full agreement. 
Second, in the absence of any definition for this unity, and in light of Empower 21's involvement with Palestinian Christian leaders, such as Jack Sarah, this was demonstrated at the conference, it appears that Empower 21 is calling evangelicals to stand in unity with those who promote this, this political narrative that demonizes Jews and delegitimizes the Jewish state. Empower 21's relationship with Palestinian Christians is demonstrated by the inclusion of Jack Sarah, which I just mentioned. He's the president, remember, the president of, of uh, Bethlehem Bible College. He was involved in the conference, as well as others. And as president of Bethlehem Bible College, this is a, this is a worldwide known institution also because of the number of Americans who go there for their conferences. So this man is, he's not only responsible for the college's promotion of Palestinian replacement theology and anti-Israel propaganda, but he's responsible for the way this school is targeting the American audience with this message. Furthermore, he's responsible for the anti-Zionist message promoted at Christ at the Checkpoints, which I've already mentioned. So but because of his involvement, this is my concern, because of his involvement and the involvement of other Palestinian Christian pastors and leaders, it appears that a Christian with these beliefs is to be included among those who Empower 21 advocates unity with or being in full agreement. This is extremely dangerous. This emphasis on unity is at the expense of truth. It means that Empower 21 can become a vehicle for the international promotion of a Palestinian Christian anti-Zionist narrative. So that's why I have been writing about this and talking about this. I'm, I'm very, very concerned. Empower 21 claims to, to represent 640 million Christians worldwide, evangelical Christians worldwide. It also includes the Pentecostals are in that. Um, so this, the, the possibilities for this are, are alarming. This, this could represent the most extensive threat to evangelical support of Israel that we've seen yet, just because of the worldwide reach of this organization. So at this point, I just want to give you some more data points to illustrate the connections between Christ at the Checkpoint, the production of this film, um, Little Town of Bethlehem, and Empower 21. And again, I'm sorry, I have to mention names, otherwise you won't, you won't know what I'm talking about. The, the chairman of Empower 21 is Dr. Billy Wilson. Wilson was a speaker at the Christ at the Checkpoint conference in March of 2014. And Wilson's responsible for the inclusion of the Palestinian leaders, such as the president, Jack Sarah. This is very painful to say, but Wilson is also the current president of Oral Roberts University in Tulsa. It's an internationally recognized school, very, very important evangelical school in the world. It's very, this is very disturbing because prior to Wilson's presidency, ORU had an exemplary history of support for Israel. Oral Roberts, the man who founded the school, is very, very pro-Israel. And the vast majority of the faculty and the students are still pro-Israel. However, Wilson's leading the school in a different direction. And as a result of his leadership in Empower 21 and ORU, ORU now plays a significant role in advancing this Empower 21 movement, which is headquartered on the campus of ORU. So the concern over the relationship between the leadership of ORU, Empower 21, Bethlehem Bible College, and Christ at the Checkpoint is magnified as a result of the relationship between the source of funding for ORU, Empower 21, and the film I mentioned, Little Town of Bethlehem. There's a lot of money involved. And that takes me back to the man I mentioned, Mark Green, who funded the film Little Town of Bethlehem. He was funded it, and he was the producer. Mark Green was the chair of the Oral Roberts Board of Trustees from 2008 to 2014. Since 2008, Green has given $250 million to ORU, a fact that not only bought him the position, I'm sorry if that sounds cynical, but I think it bought him the position of the chair of the board, and also gives him an inordinate amount of influence and power. Empower 21 was Mark Green's idea after he became the chair of the board, and Empower 21 is supported and promoted by the university that Mark Green has also funded. So this is the reason ORU now plays such a significant role in this movement, which is very, 
I, I can't say enough how alarmed I am about this. Uh, Mark Green, of course, is also a member of the board of Empower 21, and he was a participant in the conference in Jerusalem last May, along with Jack Sarah and other pro-Palestinian pastors. So to summarize, in Empower 21, we have the combination of Mark Green's money and influence, his obvious sympathy for the Palestinian Christian narrative, as demonstrated by his production of Little Town of Bethlehem, and the relationship of the Empower 21 leadership with the Palestinian Christian leaders, such as Jack Sarah. This does not bode well in terms of the future of evangelical support for Israel, because as I mentioned, because of the, the expansive effect of Empower 21. Uh, in closing, I just want to repeat something that I said at the beginning. In light of current world events, now more than ever, we, Jews, evangelicals, all Christians for that matter, we must focus on what we have in common and stand together for our own sakes and for the sake of Israel. And I also want to remind us of something that we know from history, and that is that all it takes for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing or to remain silent. In the biblical book of Esther, in the context of an impeding genocide of the Jews, Mordecai challenged Esther to not remain silent in the face of evil, but use her position to change the course of history. He also cautioned her that inaction, doing nothing, would not ensure her safety. We cannot just sit back and hope for the best. We will not be safe if we do not take action. So I encourage all of us to speak out and take action whenever possible. And in particular, I want to encourage all the Christians here today to not remain silent, but act and counter this evil that's dangerous for all of us, the evil of Christian anti-Zionism. Thank you.